Are you ready? All right. I'm here with Nick Melillo, the legend behind Foundation Cigars. I'm a big fan. Foundation Cigar Company. Shout out to them. <laughs> How you doing, man? I'm doing well. Great to see you guys. It's fantastic to see you. Uh, PCA 2022, here we are. It's been a little while since we've been here. Excited to be here. Great turnout today. And it's great to be talking with you guys. Likewise, honor's mine. Uh, my, my honor's all mine. <laughs> so what do you got new coming out? We got some exciting things this year that is coming out. The first is the Macho Raton in the Wawense. This is a 12 count, four and three quarters by 60 Perfecto. Um, so we came out with a five year anniversary the year before last. So this is actually that blend in a 12 count box. Nice. Um, sorry, I got a Ricola in my mouth. Ricola. Um, so the Wawense was my debut uh, brand at the show in 2015. Uh, it's an all Nicaraguan blend, the core line. This has a San Andreas Mexican binder and the rest of it's Nicaraguan fillers. This is a special blend from the core line. Nice. Um, so this is gonna be shipping probably in September. We also have it in the Maduro, which this hasn't Ooh. been released yet. So same size, four and three quarters by 60, uh, Maduro wrapper, hearty blend, medium. They're both in the medium range. Where's the Maduro wrapper from? This is from San Andreas, Mexico. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Which is one of my favorite, um, which I just developed a new core line around also. So you'll be seeing that in a second. Mexican, Mexican tobacco seems to be becoming a lot more popular. You know, it's actually one of the, the San Andreas Negro seed is one of the oldest seed varieties in the world, really? uh, which is what I developed the Omec line around. So it actually predates the Habanisa seed, the Cuban seed. So when tobacco came up from Peru, they dated tobacco 2.1 million years old wow. from Peru. So it was actually the same gentleman who discovered the saber tooth tiger discovered fossilized tobacco in Peru. So that goes back 2.1 million years old, and then it went north. It actually went through Mexico first, and then into the Caribbean and up north. So the Negro seed is is very old. Um, so Foundation, they're messing with that prehistoric tobacco. They're bringing you the real OG. This has 2.1 million year old tobacco in it. It's unbelievable. Aged. It's so aged. No, but that I you know I love history, culture, foundation. You know I love putting that into my brands. The Olmec is definitely an example of that. The Olmec culture predates Mayan, Inca, Aztec culture. So in the 40s, they discovered these colossal heads in Mexico. This is the area of San, San Andreas Tuxtel and San Lorenzo. This is where all of the Negro seed San Andreas wrapper is grown. These guys were one of the first to smoke cigars. So there's this symbol here. This is the oldest symbol of cigar smoking that we know. Of. We'll get a close-up of that. Yeah. These are just beautiful. So all of this tobacco in the filler is aged three years in bales. Um, the San Andreas is at two years in fermentation. So this is a real special, hearty, rich, full-bodied, but really well-balanced blend. This comes in 12-count boxes in the Maduro Ascudo wrapper and then also in a Claro, in a light wrapper. Really? Yeah. Um, so I'm really excited about this. We're looking September. This is going to be shipping to stores, five sizes, um, no cellophane on these. So September is going to be a great month. It's going to be a big <laughs> month. <laughs> Lastly, we have a very special project I've been working on for a couple of years. This is to commemorate the 100th anniversary of King Tut's discovery. So I work with High Clare Castle, which are these right here. Hi, Claire. Uh, Lord Carnarvon lives in this castle. His great grandfather discovered King Tut's tomb with Howard Carter. So he a huge history buff, huh? Big time. I love history. It's part of the reason why I did the project with Hi, Claire. Originally, is knowing the cigar culture at Hi, Claire, but also that they discovered King Tut's tomb. Um, this is an exact replica of a box found within the tomb. This is called Senetor, which is uh, ancient Egyptian for incense. It actually means of the gods. This is a 12 count, um, six and three quarters by uh, 52 Perfecto. This is a very elegant spoke, medium. It's just elegant, silky, cedar, spice, but 
just where the tobacco is from. So it's uh, the wrapper is from Ecuador. It's a uh, Habano Ecuador, similar to the High Clear Victorian. The binder is Matafina Brazil, but the fillers are all also bale aged for three plus years. So it's a different blend than the High Clear Victorian. Uh, all the fillers are different, similar wrapper and binder. Fantastic. Yeah. You got a lot of stuff coming out. You know, we, we did, these are all special runs and the Olmec is a core line. And, you know, it's been since COVID, you know, we haven't really come up with anything the past couple of years. So I've been working on these for almost three, you know, two and a half years now. So a lot of thoughts gone into them. A lot of thought, a lot of thought. Yeah. And um, we've also been working on opening up our new office in the Connecticut River Valley, which is going to happen in September on a hundred acre farm in the Connecticut River Valley. So I've been working on that. Really? Yeah. You're growing, you're going to be growing your own shade tobacco? We work with, uh, unfortunately, not a lot of shade is still grown in the valley, but broadleaf and Cuban seed, which we use on our tabernacle lines. Um, a lot of the shade has gone to Ecuador, unfortunately, but we're working with different farmers on different seed varieties, experimenting um, in the valley a little bit with more. the big Connecticut broadleaf shortage, I would just solidify you guys. Dude, you know about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, last year weather-wise was a tough year with broadleaf the past five years has been tough you know that's why our tabernacle line is is very limited we only have a you know a certain amount but i've been working with farmers in the valley since 05 06 so it's uh it's my home state special place so um just wrote an article in a new magazine uh atf about the history of connecticut tobacco so I, you should check oh, it out i'm gonna definitely check that out. i love i'm a history buff when it comes to tobacco Listen, uh, we, we just had a big discovery uh, this past year, about three months ago in Utah. You know, generally it's been accepted. Tobacco use goes back 5,000 years. They found a site in Utah that went back to 12,500. They found tobacco seeds on the site. So it's actually changing what we know about tobacco right now. So when I said history buff, I meant I'm a fan of history. You're an actual buff. <laughs> I don't know. I just, you, you know. know. This is what I do when I'm not. This, yeah, I disconnect. Then I go into YouTube wormholes and study old books and stuff like that. Nice. So speaking of the pandemic. Yeah. Like back in January, demand was sky high. A lot of retailers, they couldn't even stock shelves. How do you see the industry today? It's curious to see how the show, to me, the show is, I mean, from today's performance where we're I think we're different in that we're a newer company so you know someone that's a, a little kid five years old doesn't grow the same way somebody 40 years old we're still young you know we're about six years in so the demand for our stuff has been really flattering um, it is gonna be curious I think there's a lot of people at the show I was expecting a lot less people yeah. I mean there was a lot of traffic and we're just day the one back of the the trade show booth so um i think supply is is steady but it's still still tight i mean you got you still got factories that are way behind i mean we're we're way behind so yeah. it's tough to say it's slowing down when we're so behind well, you say you're young but you're making big waves very quickly we try man you know i've been in this industry since 1996 doing what I started in a cigar shop in 1996. Nice. I was 18. I moved to Nicaragua in 2003. So I've How been, long did you live there? I've been in Nicaragua. COVID was the first time I've been out of Nicaragua for this most time in 18 years. Wow. So my, I was most of my time in Nicaragua. When I started Foundation, I've been split my time managing the sales team, the office, but most of my year this year has been in Nicaragua. Yeah. All right, Nick. It's yeah. it's my pleasure. It's pleasure. great to meet I you. Appreciate your patience and your, your guys. Absolutely. Today, I can't wait. To I love your you. product, so it's my pleasure. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you, guys. That was one of our longer interviews. <laughs>